Okay, so we're back for another another video. So this this video I'm gonna show you how to um, build up uh, some assemblies, and I'm also gonna show you how to kind of uh, animate the motion of an assembly, and also show you how to kind of make videos um, uh, of your assembly in motion. So um, I'm gonna go through. We're gonna try and make like a kind of a model internal combustion engine actually. So I'm, I'm gonna make quite a few parts. I'm gonna make them kind of quickly so you might have to hit rewind on the video. But first I'm gonna make a base for to put this whole thing on. So I'm gonna sketch and you should at this point be somewhat familiar with making parts in, in SOLIDWORKS with making the flashlight parts and maybe some of the tutorials. Um, again making sure we're in inches. Um, so I don't know. I'm kind of making this just off the top of my head here, but it's two by ten seems reasonable for what I'm thinking. So this is just going to be a base, and I'm going to extrude this uh, maybe a quarter of an inch or something. So I'm just going to put everything on here and um, attach it to this in different ways. So I'm going to save this just on the desktop for future reference um, as my base. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Um, so I'm going to do a new part again. And um, next, let's make uh, maybe let's make like the um, I'm going to make the cylinder wall. So I'm going to do sketch again, top plane, make a rectangle. I'm going to make a rectangle with a, a hole uh, in the middle of it. I don't have to smart to mention this whole thing, so uh, let's make this hole 1.5 inches. And I'm going to make this 2 by 2, so it's just going to sit um, sit right on my base nicely. And let's see, I'm going to have to dimension this to 1 and 1 inch. Okay, so I'm going to take this kind of sketch and I'm just going to extrude it out. Um, let's do um, the hux 3 inches. Okay, so this will be my kind of, uh, this will be my cylinder. Um, and, uh, and so my piston's going to go up and down in here. So i got to save this part too. So we have cylinder. I'm going to save that. Um, Next, let's make the piston. So another new part. The piston's gonna have to be a little bit of a funky, a funky shape. So this one I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do on the uh, front plane because I'm gonna start with the kind of this head of the piston right here. And I want this to be the same as the uh, same as the other one. And you know, my memory's already getting bad, so if I wanna kind of remind myself what the was so uh, I can see that this was 1.5 inches so I need to make my um I'll just exit this out uh, I'm gonna have to make this uh, 1.5 inches so that it slides in and out of there um, in real life of course I have to make it slightly smaller at least a couple thousands so I'm gonna exit this I'm gonna extrude this out um, let's go with like a quarter inch so it's not a very, not a very tall piston head, but it'll work for R6 for the demonstration. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a spot for the connecting rod to connect to. So I'm gonna sketch on this face, and I'm just gonna make a little. Um, let's do actually a center rectangle. That way it's kind of easy for me to center it. I'm gonna do something like this. Um, and the only dimension that I really care about in this case is dimension from the center to here. And I'm going to make this a 0 0.5. That's a little bit too much. 0 0.25. Let's go 0 0.25. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the only critical dimension here. I mean, you can mention these other things if you want. I'll let your, 
I'll let you kind of free wheel at that point with making whatever whatever you think is best. And I'm gonna bring this out probably about an inch. Good. So I got my little tab, and then again I'm gonna sketch on this face. I'm gonna kind of see if I can get it to be all centered. So um, I'm gonna make this quarter inch in diameter, and I'm gonna put it. Good enough. I'm gonna bring this thing up a half inch. Speed this up. So you can see this will just be kind of, you know, yeah. You know, in reality, you kind of have a clevis or two tabs and a bolt, kind of, you know, or some sort of press fit uh, rod, that pin or rod that goes in there to connect to the connecting rod. But you know, for sake of today, our piston will look something like this. So I'm gonna save this. And this is going to be our piston. So a couple, a couple other parts we're going to need to make are going to be our, uh, our simplified crankshaft. So let's sketch on the top plane. I'm going to make a little super simple crankshaft. Um, so it's going to be uh, two inches in diameter. And it's just going to have a spot for the connecting rod to connect to. And um, I'm just, for the sake of sanity, keep all these the same, 0 0.25. And so for this thing to sit right on the outer edge, uh, it's going to be 1 inch minus the radius. So this is going to be 7 eighths. So 0 0.875. There we go, right on the edge. Um, I'd have to dimension it up and down as well if you wanted to go black, but I'm going to go quick with this today since we're not really talking about making parts today. Um, we're kind of just going to go into the assembly portion of it as quick as we can. So we're going to extrude this up. Ooh, got a little ahead of myself. Um, let me go back. So let me go back and I'm going to edit my sketch. I'm going to click here and delete this. First, I wanted to make this base. So, this, we're going to extrude it. Um, let's extrude this up, uh, I don't know, half inch. Good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to now sketch on this and do the little, oops, see, you can tell I didn't quite hit sketch on this. Now we're going to uh, bring the pin out for, so this is kind of like the portion that's on the, you know, connected to the engine block, and this is kind of the portion that's connecting to the connecting rod. So here we have um, 0.25, like I said, and, you know, if you're not a big engine person, not everybody is, don't worry about it. Um, and you don't really get, you know, don't worry about the names quite so much of the things I'm saying, but just kind of follow along and you'll uh, you'll understand how to make assemblies. Um, so here we have this, and now I'm just going to extrude this up. And I'll extrude it up just an inch because. There we go. And then I need this to rotate about something, so let's do the... Let's put a center hole in. So I'm going to go back and edit the sketch again. I'm going to put a little quarter inch hole right down the middle of it. So I can go uh, 0 0.125. There we go. See? So that's the nice part. Another part, like I mentioned before, instead of direct modeling, I'm using this parametric modeling. It's pretty easy to rebuild things. save this part, we call this the crank. So you can tell um, one thing that I might want to do is actually, actually I'm going to save that for later. Uh, last part is the connecting rod. So let's do a new part. And we might have to change the connecting rod on the fly just to get the 
kinematics or just get the geometry right so everything fits together but we can I can show you how to do that too so we've got this top plane we're going to start with our corner rectangle um, I'm going to start out with a guess of about uh, what the heck six inches making it six inches long maybe a half inch tall it's going to have a couple of uh, spots to connect to um, I'm just going to have to dimension these so sure I can start with this making all my holes a quarter inch hole is a quarter inch um, zoom in a little bit so I can get the points that I want a quarter inch from each side this baby right in the middle so now come into this one There we go. So the other thing we'll do is let's we're gonna fill it uh, this. And so if we wanted this just to be a half circle, it's actually SolidWorks is a little bit buggy about it. So if we go like 0 0.125 here, uh, actually sorry, 0 0.25, and then we do one here, it's actually not gonna be that happy because these things intersect. So what we actually do is like two four. Kind of tricks all works a little bit. Ah, there we go. So just barely touch here, but not actually touch. Hmm. So now we have what looks like kind of a simplified connecting rod, since you know both sides are the same size, which wouldn't be necessarily typical. So we're going to exit the sketch here, and we're going to extrude this up 0.5. There we go. Got our connecting rod. Save. Connecting. All right. So let's start with our new type of file now. So um, you can see we can make an assembly, but let's let's bring in. Let's just make a new file. The reason I didn't say make assembly from this part is the first thing that you bring in is going to be fixed in space. So let's see here if we right click on it um, uh, do, 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 do. so usually they'll have this kind of um, this uh, float or fix so we say float I think now it should go to fix yeah there we go so right now it's fixed in space so it can't I can't drag it around in space but when we bring in some more stuff like the connecting rod Good. So these, they're all floating in space. So this first one, and so I wanted my base, so I brought it in first. And of course, you could switch it around, but all right. So let's not have too much stuff overlap here. Um, this looks like everything we need. But you'll notice that we'd actually want this crank to spin around something. So let's try something. So let's go to the base. Let's select it a couple times, and let's. Let's try uh, making some modifications right now to it and see what happens. So I'm going to come here and make a little pin. Um, let's make this an inch from each side so that, it's in, that crank kind of sits centered. Okay, this looks good. And now I'm going to extrude this up. And I only have to extrude a half inch since that's the thickness of the pin. I'm going to make sure to save it. Let's see what happens when we go back to our assembly. You'll see here, models contained within the assembly have changed. Would you like to rebuild the assembly now? I say yes. Oh, and we got our thing now. Okay, so first thing to do with the assembly is to bring in, is to bring in all of the, is to bring in all of the, all of the parts that you want to use. Or you can bring them in one at a time. But anyways, you need to bring in the parts. The other thing you have to tell in an assembly is how the parts are all related to each other in space. And so they call those mates. So how are the parts mated to each other? How do they 
fit together. So I'm going to click on this mate, and you'll see once I start adding mates, they'll start getting added under here. And here you can see some of the different features, and so you can modify stuff in here now if you want. Um, but I like to do them in the other part files just so that I keep it straight. So the first thing we're going to do, and so there's a couple different ways to mate things. Um, so I could say like this circle is concentric with this circle, and then it would float up in space. So let's try that. So I'm going to even just come on the top and say this is going to be concentric with this. Boom. Right? And I can click check mark, and these things would float up and down, but it can't go this other way. And it could spin. And so, and then I could then take this and say that's going to be mated with that. Check. And then this thing could spin in space. Um, another option, so I'm going to open these up. I can select these and delete them. So I'm going to pull this up in space now. So for example, for like this mate, if we wanted to, so sometimes see we had this selected already, so you got to be careful when you delete that. You could just say this edge, this bottom edge here, it's just always going to be coincident with this edge. And that way I can use one mate to achieve what I did with two mates before. So there's a lot of ways to do things and you can see that's one example where one is more efficient than the other. So let's now put this cylinder block down. So maybe I'll say you know, it's kind of symmetric. You could rotate it uh, 90 degrees in increments and you never notice the difference. So it doesn't matter what I pick. But So I want that one to lay there. Maybe I want this sidewall to be here, but oh, I don't want them in that direction, so I'm going to align them like this. Boom. So now it's the last thing to do is just to fix it on the end. If I rotate over here, take these two, I have the right alignment. I don't want this, right? Oh, it doesn't even look happy when it does that. Let's do the other way. Okay, so boom. So now we have. This one completely fixed in space. This one's just allowed to rotate. And then these two uh, can move anywhere. Completely free. So the next thing I'll do is let's say that this outside wall has to stay coincident with this outside wall. That looks that looks okay. So now this thing can rotate, but it's also just gonna move in and out like a piston would in, in its cylinder. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say this bottom portion here, like I did before, is going to stay coincident with that one. See, you know, obviously that's kind of unrealistic because it's going to hit, but there. There we go. So, and then the last thing we're going to want to say is that this. And I don't necessarily, it's not going to necessarily sit at the right and the bottom, so we're just going to have to say that they are coincident. There we go. So, you can see I didn't, my connecting rod is probably a little bit short. Because as I rotate this, let's see, I rotate this back, it comes out. So, I probably want another. And let's see how far it goes. That's only so I could make my connecting rod, you know, maybe another uh, inch longer. So let's come to my connecting rod and and when I s open my sketch, let's make this seven. I save it and come back to my assembly. I say I did it. Yes. Now it kind of looks like an engine, right? It's moving in circles. Here we go. Okay, well, you know, I don't want to have to. If I'm going to show someone my engine. I'm not going to. I'm not going to want to have to. Uh, have to bring them up to my computer and then do this in front of them so they can see it. So, how can I make a video to show them it in motion? So another thing we can do is maybe this uh, cylinder wall. We can uh, let's see here. We can change it so it's transparent. Now it'll be kind of cool. Yeah, now we can really see it going. So that's a nice. So that's nice. Do it that way. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to open up this motion study tab on the bottom. So um, 
You can see there's some different things we can do. Animation, basic motion. If we go to um, these like SolidWorks motion, we'll even have more more stuff. But right now, we actually only need to animate it. So basically, just going more of these will just give you more options for things you can do. Um, so let's go to let's go to animation. So we're not going to need any of these kind of physics-based stuff. Right now, we're just going to want it to rotate. So we're just going to say, okay, take this. Let's just rotate this at 100 RPM. And you see it's done it for five seconds. So we can calculate it, show everything in motion, and then we can play from the start. And at this point, you can save the animation, or you can even you know, do some different things. Um, so, so yeah, so now you can already create the video showing showing your showing your uh, showing your engine. Let's say if we want to get a little fancier with a little fancier with the uh, with the video. So let's let's take a thing out to 16 seconds. Um, we calculate the motion of everything all the way up to 16 seconds. So right now we can rotate it in space, and then I can play it from the start, and it's always showing me this one spot. So I can come to this spot, calculate it. You can do it from a different. You can do it from a different location. So it's not. It's not really specific. It's not really specific in the in the location of the of the of where the camera is essentially looking at it. And that's because right now we have um, disable view key creation. So what we can just do is enable the view key creation. And then what we can do is we can go to different time periods like this. And we can maybe rotate it and say, okay, at this time we want to look here. And maybe at this time we want to look here. And at this time we want to look here. And let's recalculate from the beginning. Oops. So now we can see we can kind of move it in space. And change change how it looks. So that's kind of fun. We can, we can go even a little, a little crazier. So we can delete these and let's um let's go uh, I'm going to disable the view key creation so I don't kind of mess with myself too much here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come to this this sketch and I'm gonna ask the sketch on um I'm gonna sketch on like the plane on top of this. Um, well, maybe not actually. I don't want it to confuse it too much. Uh, so, I'm going to exit the sketch. And since I didn't sketch anything, it won't do anything. So, let's go to the model view. And let's sketch here. I'm going to sketch. So this one goes back and forth. Um, well, I can let me show you something new in, just in case in case that doesn't work. So um, let's go to So that took me a second to find it, but in here, uh, reference geometry under the assembly, and we can make a we can make a plane, um, and uh, so we can just reference, let's say, the top plane here, and we can even just uh, kind of drag it, but um, let's just say uh, two inches. Let's see here. Uh, 
want to kind of put it in the middle here. So 6.5, something like that. Okay, so make a reference plane. And now we can, I'm going to sketch where the camera is going to go. So sketch, I'm just going to do this. And maybe it's going to start out here. So this is the path that I want my camera to go in. So I'm going to come back to my motion study and uh, just drag this out to about, oh, just drag this to 10 seconds. Okay, let's recalculate it all. Just make sure it's all happy. Okay, so what we're going to do again is we're going to right click and just do disable view key creation. And we're going to come here and um, I say show cameras. Should be able to add a camera. Okay, so it looked like there was a little blip there. I had to, what I essentially had to do was to save it and rebuild the sketch, and then um, uh, and then essentially I had to. Now I can right click and I can add a camera, which is nice. Okay, so what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're going to target selection. So this frame shows you what the camera sees. This frame is letting me do the selection. So we're gonna let's select like just kind of always view this point basically. And position by selection. So don't click on the point, but click near the end over there. And what we can do is we can also zoom out, we can kind of change the view here. We can also rotate it if it's not right. So we're gonna click check here. So that looks good. And then we're gonna drag this to our end time. Boom. And then we're gonna right click and do properties of this camera. And now we're gonna do target by selection still. And but our position is now gonna be here. And we're gonna click check. And let's uh, play from the beginning. So now you can see it's following. Following this uh, path. And you might kind of go, okay, well, that's a... Uh, it's a little bit um, uh, annoying that... Um, that... Uh, you have all these lines and stuff visible. So what we do. Okay, so yeah, now we've um now that we're in this kind of uh, motion study mode, we can come back out here. And if we want, we can kind of right click and hide hide different portions of it. Um, and then go back to the motion study and then uh, hit play, and now it'll look a little bit nicer for us. There's an interesting little flip right there through the middle. So now you can, you know, save this animation at different aspect ratios, you know, different uh, uh, just different file types, um, so that you could, you know, put it in a PowerPoint if you want to show and etc etc so um, so yeah so that'll end that'll end kind of doing the animation and uh, assembly portion of uh, SOLIDWORKS that I'll show you um, there's of course you know in these tutorials I don't know if there's much about that but there's some other assemblies you can practice with um, assembly mates those sorts of things so there's more you can play with if you want to continue to learn more about assemblies uh, Alright, so good luck.